Hello world, it is I, your fabulous happy man, and I shall now tell you the story of hauling the hay. As I said before, we were working a huge cattle operation, and my father had heard about some free hay through a friend of ours. Free hay, all you wanted, I think it was 2,000 bales on the ground, bales ready to haul, free to whoever wanted to come get it, for some reason or another. So anyhow, on a farm you can't have too much hay. There's no such thing as too much hay. The more hay you got, the better off you are. Something for the cows to nibble on all winter. Uh, you can use it to seed out levee banks. You can use it to seed out bare patches in your pasture. And it's just good for all kind of stuff. Can't have too much hay. And, and it's free hay. All you have to do is go get it. So... We decided, we made our plan, we were going to get as much of it as we could. Going to try to get at least 500 bales. And the word had gone out far and wide, so there was going to be a hay and cruise from all over the place. And for you city folks who may not understand about hay, hauling hay is an integral part of the cattle business. You're not really raising cattle. The cattle raise themselves. What you're raising is pastures and hay. And you want as much hay as you can get. And another aspect of hay is that it's almost impossible to get a good, steady haying crew. There are commercial crews that go haying, and there are some farmers that are better organized and have larger families. But to find these hands to haul hay for you, almost impossible. The pay is ridiculous. It's the cruelest work on the farm. The hottest time of the year, hauling hay, old scratchy old hay. <laughs> so, we heard about this free hay. We're going to go get this hay. We're going to fill our barns up with this hay. So, I, being the child of logic, and having done this before, and knowing the pitfalls of hay hauling, which is usually trailer flats. You have flats on your trailer tires because the hay trailer is the crappiest piece of equipment on the farm. It's the least kept up. It's a hay trailer. You only use it once a year, and you only use it to haul hay. And it doesn't get maintained well, and most of them are pretty thrown together. And people would get out there and haul it and anything. Well, anyhow, I was going to get ready. So we borrowed a trailer from a good friend of ours named Mr. Glendon Spikerton, a truly good farmer. He had this trailer, oak plank deck, dual axle, had the fenders on it, lights with the harness hookup, tag, legal. You couldn't ask for a better trailer. So I got this trailer. And I had it hooked to my little, I had had an Isuzu pickup with extended cab, and it'd pull it. And I had extra trailer tires, four extra trailer tires inflated. I had the pump jack. I had all the tools I could possibly need to work on the truck. I had extra fuel. I had chains, ropes, binding straps, everything you could possibly need. In case anything went wrong and the trailer was hitched to the pickup with what you call a pendle and it is a female to male on your bumper with just a pin that goes through it it's not a ball hitch it's just a pendle and it was a pin through it and i was using this pin that we used to hang a gate and it's a big long pin that goes through a post and you've seen them and it has bolts and taps on it and you hang a gate on it and I was using it for a pen because it was, it was just real handy. And I had everything I needed. So, we had, <laughs> we had hired these two young boys to help haul this hay. And I'll have to tell you a little bit about them. There were some interesting young men. Sadly enough, the oldest brother, the brothers, the oldest child was the son of his mother and his grandfather through incest. But that's neither here nor there. He was a nice kid. They were good boys. His, his younger brother, of course, the natural son of a, his mother and another father, who claimed and adopted the older child. And they were, they were nice enough boys, and God bless their hearts. They, they, uh, they weren't bad children, and they were, just, they were just dumb and dirt. They were actually dumber than dirt. <laughs> because you can actually grow plants out of dirt. Anyhow, but they were good kids, but they didn't know jack squat about hollow hay. So this was a learning curve for them. And I'm going to tell you what, it was the very 
least of arts, their learning curve. It was like, you could tell them something and it was like, they weren't even listening to you. Like, like they'd forget it five minutes later, they weren't even listening to their mouth breathing like this. But anyhow, they were good enough kids. So, I, you know, I work with what I got. We're going to holler this hay. I started out early, got down there to pick the boys up. Well, where they live, I couldn't get the trailer in there. And I didn't want to go walking down through there because it was a good three quarters of a mile down this little road they lived down. And everybody had dogs. I didn't want to get dog bit. So I unhooked the trailer, drove down there and got them. We hooked the trailer back up. So we were having to haul this hay from Fawn Grove, Mississippi. Well, to Fawn Grove, Mississippi, from Smithville. And I don't mean in Smithville. I mean like 20 miles east of Smithville, Mississippi. So we were having to haul this hay. Down, you can't haul hay on the interstate. There's an interstate highway that runs right down through there, and the Mississippi Department of Transportation go insane if you haul hay on the highway. You have to get all these variances, and you know how. So anyhow, we were hauling this hay, and we had to go down the Fawn Grove Cutoff Road, which is a dirt road, and then we had to go way down and get on Highway 25 and go to Smithville and take a left right at the Smithville School. If you're familiar with Smithville, there's only that one big left turn at the school. And so I had these boys with me, and I've been talking to them some on the way down there. We stopped and got biscuits, and I didn't know them from Adam's off ox. I'd never met them in my life, but I was trying to get to know them, talking to them at all. And, you know, they were pretty darn responsive and they were rather bovine, and <laughs> ironically enough. Anyhow, they were nice enough kids. We were talking about stuff, and I was telling them about what to expect when we were hollering this hay. And I was making all these rise sardonic comments about. You know, all these people going to work for honking at us because we were in their way. And I said, ah, oh, look at these jackasses. Oh, they're just, they don't, for, you know, they don't realize the farmer feeds the man. And if it wasn't for us, they wouldn't have any good meat to eat. And they're all just in a hurry to get out there to their factory jobs. So they sit down and drink coffee and on and on with all of this, that, and the other. So we take the left there at Smithville at the school. And there was, <laughs> just so happened to be a burnt out hay baler. A big old nice new holler, one of them big round balers. It was burnt, slap up, just burnt. And all around it was burnt, like Jehovah had just struck it in anger. And I told the boys, I said, there's one of the biggest things you got to watch about holding this hay, boys, is fire. You get the fire in the hay and you're done. You can't put it out. I said, you, one of these big round bales catches on fire, you can dump it in a lake and it'll still burn. It'll be smoky bubbles coming out of it. It will not quit burning. You can't, even the fireman will tell you, you can't put it out. And uh, uh, so we were talking about that. And, you know, there that thing was that burnt up Baylor is a monument to like not being real careful and, and the things that can happen. So anyhow, we have to take a left at Smithville and we go all the way down to the end of the paved road. And this hay field is just huge. I mean, it's huge. So there's plenty of hay. So we're getting this hay. In fact, I got this little truck. I can run it in first gear and let it putter along. We can throw the hay on there. So I was having to teach the boys how to stack hay. And that's another aspect of stacking hay is the, the hay stacker is the man. Yeah, you, you can get these football players say, I can throw a bale over the truck. Well, whoop you freaking do, son. That's just damn wonderful. The only thing is we don't want it on the other side of the truck. We want it stacked on the truck. So an artful hay stacker could stack as many as 150 bales on a pickup truck and uh, not lose a bale by tying them in one with another with the weight of the others on top of them. Anyhow, I had to explain all this to them. And one of the poor boys had worn shorts, and I told him not to wear shorts, and his poor old days were just ate up. Anyhow, we were hollering this hay, and we were getting it on. We were the first ones out there. We had the first load. Man, I got that load back over there down that circuitous snake-like Byzantine Route we had to take all those back roads and dirt roads. This huge load of hay. I mean, I was loading it. And we were filling the bar up. We had already gotten about, man, we probably had gotten 450 bales. And uh, we are on our, uh, uh, our load there. We were, I think we were at 600 bales. With, I had managed to get 150 on it. And we had 450 in the barn already. And, uh, man, we were getting it on. The other people were admiring us. Well, as fate would have it. <laughs> and as fate always has it, I was down there in the field, we were loading that last load, and the old trailer was bouncing some, 
on that bumper, on that pen, because the the trailer tongue, the female aspect with the two flanges was much wider than the bumper, so it was kind of bumping on that pen, and there was this wise old man, and I don't know if you're familiar with the southern wise old man, but there's always this wise old man, some old retired farmer, standing there ready to give you all this advice. He got all this advice. He can't do nothing, and he won't do anything, but he's got all this advice. And as I said before, this pen I was using was a big old threaded gate pen. It had like 197 twists on it. And I let this old man tell me, son, you need, you need, to, guy, you need to screw that down on there. She's going to jump off of that load the way it's bouncing on that bumper. It's going to just eventually work that pen out, and you're going to lose that load. She's going to jump, hitch, and run off on you. I was taught to respect my elders, and, you know, I, I'm i not a complete ass, and I that sounded like good reasoning at the time. We were hot and tired, and I was pretty tired of the boys having to keep teaching them the same things over and over and over again, and, and we were well past our dinner time, and we had eaten our dinner, which was bologna sandwiches from the cold counter at the country store, and some rat cheese and crackers, and we ate that in the truck, and it was just so hot, and they were covered with dust, and we would... There was not one minute to waste, you know, you load the hay, and then the only relief you get is riding in the truck between loading and unloading, and unloading in the barn is even worse than loading it, and so they were just worn out, and these kids, they, they just give out, couldn't even stand up hardly, one of them was sitting on the ground, and I let that old man tell me, you better, better guy her down there, son, so I took a, a big old nut, which you'd call a tap, and like a fool, I screwed that big old gate pan on that bumper. And I gave it a little slack, you know. I didn't I didn't just pinch it down on there. But I gave it enough where it wasn't jumping. He goes, yes, you'll stay on there now. You're liable to jump hitch with that pan loose like that. And I listened to him because, I, you know, he's an 87-year-old farmer. They know what they're talking about. They they farmed with mules, for God's sakes. You know, they didn't have any Monsanto and these fancy New Holland hay balers and all of this. And I, So I listened to the old man. Big mistake. We're hollering this load of hay out. And by this time, all these factory people that we had tussled with on the way in were coming home from work. And they're pretty mad when they're on their way to work, but they're really pissed off when they're on their way home from work. I mean, just burning up to get to the house. And then once they get to the house, they get to Walmart. And they are just just madder than a sack of wet hornets. <laughs> and I was telling the boys, I said, look at these guys. Here they come back from work. I said, now you watch. We're going to try to haul these loads of hay out. And we're going to have these long strings of cars behind us with all these asses honking at us, just dying to get down there so they can just bust in the door of their double-wide trailer and just flop down in their recliner and sit there and, well, there goes the owl, and sit there and just, comment on the world, on everything they know about everything and how much they hate everything. And <laughs> so sure enough, we're coming out of the hayfield. And it was a haul now from this hayfield, even back up to Smithville. And it's a tiny, one of those tiny little country roads that's about a lane and a quarter. And it's one of those places where the mailboxes are on both sides. These people were so independent, they weren't going to be forced to put their mailboxes on one side straight. Oh, hell no. They had mailbox on both sides of the street. So you couldn't really, or this road. So you really couldn't get around it good. And the ditch cuts were pretty radical. And everybody had these giant iron culvert driveway drainage things. And you didn't want to hit it. And it was just hard to get around. And plus, I was hollering this giant load of hay. And I said, you know what? These guys are going to get behind us. And they're just going to be cussing us and honking us. And hell, we're the one that's feeding them. We've been out here doing a man's work all the way, old timey traditional American man, and they just been sitting up there in some factory goofing off about 15 minutes out of every hour, and we've been just uh, getting it. I said, you watch them, and I was making all these cynical comments. I said, there'll be some ass that will see a clear space and try to pass us in the ditch, and sure enough, somebody did it in a pickup, come just a dukes of hazard and all around down through there, <laughs> spinning gravel just to flipping us and bird and cussing us come up right in front of us, and we can hear them. I went to the road, you can hear them out the windows hollering at us. You son of a bitch, go, pull over. And what I was talking about hollering is, Mississippi is an agricultural state. 
on township, county, and state highways, agricultural equipment has a right of way. And I was taught when you're hauling a load, don't stop and pull over and let them people go by, or you'll never get where you're going. The best thing you can do is haul your load in a straight line, and don't worry about all the people behind you honking. Let them honk. It's an agricultural state, and you have the right of way. So, <laughs> we're going, this is like 15 miles up to there. And I bet we had a trail of 80. Uh, just, just these really, really angry, angry, angry country people trying to get to Walmart and get their checks cashed and whatever the hell of that. Some of them might have even been had irritable bowel syndrome or just had irritable syndrome from the get go. Anyhow, we're all, <laughs> we get up to Smithville and I said, now you watch, we'll turn up here on the blacktop, get on this two lane, and every one of these jackasses is just going to punch it like they're in NASCAR trying to get around us. And you watch, some of them will be cussing at us. I said, we're just going to ignore them. And so we make the turn at Smithville, and I mean, we have got this load of hay. I got the trailer loaded and the truck, and I mean, I got her loaded. <laughs> so we're easing around this curve, and these people are all just honking and honking and honking at us. And I had noticed on the way people were honking at us. People were coming out on the port of their homes. To look at us as we were going up this long road with this procession of people behind us that were just honking and everybody behind us honking their horns and hollering. And I was telling the boys, you know, I don't listen to those assholes. And these people were coming out on their porches and watching us go by as we went up the road to Smithville. And I said to the boys, look, they're all on their cell phones calling up there and telling them, check out this pack of redneck assholes blocking the road. Well, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> We make the turn at Smithville. These cars come roaring by us. I mean, just flying. I said, look at these jackasses. And this one car stopped. And the woman rode down her window. And I couldn't see what she was saying. I thought she was saying, F you. You know, you go. I thought she was saying, you go F yourself. And she was saying, you're on fire. You're on fire. And I thought, what? And I looked in the mirror. And look back, and by God, we were on fire. And not only were we on fire, we were on fire. And I thought, holy shit, we were right in front of Smithville School. And I mean, if you've ever been there, they got this cut bank, like 30 feet. And it's like, if I tried to go down that, it was just going to flip everything. And I started thinking real quick, I mean, microsecond burst of, okay, 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 what can I do? What can I do? What can I, do? I got to do something. What I want to do is get away from this burning trailer. And I didn't want to go down that bank, and I didn't want to pull out into traffic and get over in the field and burn up, because it was right next to, ironically enough, the burn up hay baler. And there wasn't, I thought, okay, I'll unhook from the trailer. I got that pin in it, I'll just pull a pin and leave it and let the son of a bitch burn up. Well, I got back there, and I, <laughs> as fate would have it, I had let that old man talk me into putting that damn nut on that pin. So I had to root around in the back of the tra truck under all this hay, trying to find the wrench to get it off. We go box wrench and got out. It was going to take about 35 turns to get it off. And all the time I'm doing this, this trailer is on fire and it's stacked way above my head and the truck and I'm down in between it and it's on fire. And bits of falling fire, uh, burning hay are falling on me in fire and oh, it's just hot. And the two, I was talking to the boys, help me. I thought, we'll throw this hay at burning half, this trailer, and then just roll down that 30-foot hill down there and it can just go out or whatever. Well, that's not what you do. We rolled these hay bales up of there, and hell, that just made it burn bigger. It, it just exploded in this huge ball of flame. So I went back to trying unhooking it, and the boys were running, my helpers just ran off, I ran off. I was going, oh, you, you dirty cowards. Come back and help me because my truck was brand new. It was a brand new ice pickup. I don't want it to burn up. And I didn't want anything to burn up. I mean, I'm not insane. I wanted it to go right. And I'm just a wrenching away trying to get this big old rusty old tap up this huge thing and a hay, just burning hay falling. And I hear people hollering, get out of there, man, get out of there. And I look up and the little red plastic cover over the 
tail light was melting. I could see it melting and just melting, and I was like overcoming this, just all of this heat distortion, and I was breathing this horrible hay smoke. And the, we had made the fire worse by actually exposing more surface of hay for it to burn, and all that dust was burning. So, <laughs> there was a boat ramp down past the Smithfield School, and I thought, here's what I'll do. I'll buy God run her wide open down there the boat ramp, and I'll just run her off the boat ramp into the water, put the fire out. We can winch it out later, rebuild the motor, and everything will be fine. Well, I got in it, and I floored it. And the flames were getting, I could see flames coming over the roof. So what I did is I turned down the cutback into the Smithville baseball field, the Smithville High School baseball field, parking lot. And I started doing hot laps. And one of the boys ran down there and said, what I said, call the fire department, damn it. And I mean, I had that thing in fifth gear. I was going so fast that I almost was touching the flames that were coming out the back of the trailer. And what I was trying to do was keep it from Keep the flame going that way. Keep it from setting the gas tank off, which, as you know, in a pickup is under the bed. And I had all that load of hay on the thing anyway. And I also had some diesel, uh, some uh, uh, gasoline in a jug under that hay like a fool. I, we were tired. Anyhow, <laughs> I was cutting these hot laps in the Smithfield ball field parking lot. Going fast. I mean, had that thing red line up. Going at uh, the equivalent of about 70 miles an hour, just spinning and just slinging this, <laughs> slinging this burning hay off the trailer. And that's what I kind of ended up thinking. Well, I'm so, and I was watching the action while I real, but well, okay, I'm slinging a bunch of the burning hay off. That's good. Less burning hay le is, is better. And it was just slinging this burning hay all over this parking lot of this ball field. And, and, People started showing up. They were sitting up on the hill at the school up there. Started showing up, setting up lawn chairs, watching it. And that's where these people that had been following us started pulling. They were getting out and sitting up in the beds of their pickups watching it. And uh, all the people that had been on that road that saw me go by got in line behind the cortege, as it were. <laughs> and there were probably about 150 people sitting up there watching this show, watching me cut these hot laps. And I mean, I was shooting some flame. It was huge. Unbelievable. Going as fast as I could. Well, the fire department showed up. And he put, <laughs> the firemen pulled down there and they pulled in the little ball field parking lot and all they had the pumper and all this, that, and the other. And he was going, stop. And every time I go by, he'd holler, stop. And I told him, hell, turn the water on. And so he finally turned the water on. And he held it in a big old shower spray. And I stopped right under it and got in between the truck and the trailer with all of this fire hose water. And finally got that damn thing unscrewed and got hooked, unhooked from the trailer and pulled away. Well, he was going to, he said, oh, I'll just go ahead. I said, he said, what do you want me to do about that trailer? I said, hell, let it burn, man. It's, it's, you can't put that out. You can't put that hay fire. Oh, yeah, I can too. And he turned the fire hose on that hay and that, Trailer and it was just blowing. You can't put a, fi a hay fire out with a fire hose. And he was just blowing this burning hay <laughs> everywhere. And it was setting all the grass on fire. And it was just fire everywhere. This huge circle of fire where I had been flinging this hay, burning hay off this trailer. Oh, and he was, while he was putting the, <laughs> trying to put the trailer fire out, the tires finally caught fire. And, and blue and all, oh, well, we thought it was bombs going off and it was just a big old mess. And uh, anyhow, the coach came down and he goes, I want this mess cleaned up. And I, I'll buy, I unhooked, by the time I got it unhooked, I was just, I would give out, as they say. I was, I didn't have any more left in me. I got that truck unhooked and pulled it way over out of the way. And I just opened the door and just, was just laying on the ground. And everybody was fussing at me, the fire department, the coach, Oh, some lady had driven by the fire and it had scorched her car. And they had the highway patrol down there. Any game warden in the county law. And <laughs> so finally, anyway, I came too good and I recovered myself. And 
we get back to the barn and it was like I went back down there the next day to clean it up and pour all the trailer was burnt up. All those beautiful oak planks were burnt out. And the uh tires were burnt off of it and it was just rare. The metal had just buckled where it had burnt and it just burnt and you know, it burned all the oil, grease out of all the barrels, so it would all have been totally replaced. And they was just old, wet, black, just hay. Probably, uh, well, 150 bales worth of it, just about strode. Oh, it took forever to get that all cleaned <laughs> To clean <up. laughs> But that's the story of hauling hay, or as we call it, firewalks with happy man. <laughs>